before uh, concluding remarks, Eberhard Nobler uh, asked uh, us to uh, uh, make some uh, 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 to have some words. So, uh, uh, Eberhard, you may be here. Well, dear participants of this conference, before I come to my concluding remarks, I would like to raise a question that puzzles me since many years, namely, are mathematicians secret astrologers? You might ask why I have this suspicion, and I try to answer. In 1890, the German Association of Mathematicians has been established, and 12 years later, and after this year, every annual report of this association was decorated by a Latin inscription. I translate. It is in public interest to learn and to exercise the art of geometry. This seems to be a very appropriate motto for mathematicians. But where does it come from? It comes from the collection of valid imperial laws of the Roman Emperor Justinianus, 16th century, that is Book 9, Chapter 18. If one reads the title of this chapter, one does not believe his eyes. On wrongdoers and mathematicians and the others that, who are similar to these uh, others. And uh, the first paragraph means it is worse to extinguish a man by poison than to kill him with a sword. And the second paragraph <laughs> contains our citation. It is in public interest to learn and to exercise the art of geometry. But the damnable mathematical art <coughs> is forbidden. <laughs> and the bewildered reader, after a while, who chiefly notices not mathematics is forbidden, but astrology. But you know, if something is forbidden, it becomes attractive. <laughs> and obviously, John Henry Fields has become a secret astrologer because how can we explain otherwise his choice of the Latin inscription on his medal? And maybe this happened by a bad influence of mathematicians in Berlin because we know that Hermann Armando Schwarz gave lectures for him on the calculus of variations. So this is the Fields Medal, and here we have the Latin inscription. Martin Gottschild touched this subject yesterday because <coughs> in 1998 he was the president of the organizing committee of the International Congress of Mathematicians, rang me up in order to get informed about the content of this Latin inscription. So I went to him and uh, I translated. Uh, what could it mean? If we add the first word et, we get a complete hexameter. Et trans iris um pectus modopo portiri. And what does it mean? The first part seems to be an invitation to outstanding intellectual performances, to transcend one's mind. Okay. This seems to be appropriate for mathematicians. But what about the second part? And to take hold of the world. At least I do not know any mathematician who wants to make the emperor become the emperor of the world. And the truth is revealed by the context. Because where does it come from, the Latin inscription? The Latin inscription comes from Manilius, who wrote a textbook on astrology. And you have to imagine the virtual reader complains that it is so difficult to foresee the future by means of astrology. And the poet reprehends him, saying, you are not entitled to complain. What you are looking for is God. But you try to climb up the heaven and to recognize the faith so you are generated according to the law of faith and to transcend your mind and to take hold of the world. 
And now we notice after a while, this is the old impious wish of mankind to become like God. This is definitely, certainly not the meaning Fields had in mind when he <laughs> shows this uh, citation. But there is a strange continuation of the story. When I had such a field in my hand, I looked at it and Mati Gosha mentioned it. Here we have the date in Roman numerals for the sculpture. And it is the year 1933. And we read M C N N X X X one one one. I couldn't believe it because you know it is very not very difficult to know that N is no Roman numeral. <laughs> but go ahead. So that is the discovery in 1998, and uh, there is no way out. When I so on. When I was in Spain a bit later, I met the field medalist famous field medalist, Michael Atia. And I asked him, do you have to know, Michael, that your wonderful medal contains such a trivial mistake? No, I don't know, he said, but he promised to send a letter. And he sent me this letter on the 16th of July 2000. I had a look at my field medal. It took me a little time to find the date you mentioned. I believe I believe you are correct. I'm uh, sorry, that is no question. No. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you are correct in saying that you think the MFP is at an end, and it's therefore a mistake. However, it is in very small characters, and the difference at that scale between M and N is almost not visible to the naked eye. Michael Atia. Obviously, he had forgotten that already Newton had said. In mathematics, even the smallest mistakes are not permitted. <laughs> so, let me come to my concluding remarks. <laughs> to say that I am very happy about this conference would be a strong understatement. I'm really overwhelmed by your friendliness. I'm deep in, impressed by your scholarship and uh, by your scientific competence. And this wonderful conference is really the most outstanding gift I could imagine. <clears throat> some of you are my pupils, some of you were my guests as fellows of the Humboldt Foundation. Nearly all of you are my highly esteemed colleagues with whom I collaborate with great pleasure since decades. One of you is my beloved woman, Karin Reich. Maximas gratias vobis ago. Je vous remercie au plus haut degré les quatre organisateurs, les quinze conférenciers, tous les participants. I thank you very much indeed for this wonderful experience. Ich danke Ihnen euch von Herzen. Thank you.